Thank you for tuning in and hope all is well. Well, let's get going with the next bit of Isaiah chapter 40. This is now the seventh part of our walk through this chapter, taking just a few verses each week as we take in all the details along the way. And we then have two more to go after this, which will take us to the end of the chapter by the end of the month. So this week, verses 21 to 24. Do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood since the earth was founded? He sits enthroned above the circle of the earth, and its people are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy and spreads them out like a tent to live in. He brings princes to naught and reduces the rulers of this world to nothing. No sooner are they planted, no sooner are they sown. No sooner do they take root in the ground than he blows on them and they wither, and a whirlwind sweeps them away like chaff. Well now, here is the problem. We know what is true about God, but so often it doesn't really seem to make a difference to how we live, to the things we do or think, to the priorities we have. So these verses begin with four questions, kind of rapid fire, one after the other. Do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood since the earth was founded? See, as God, through his prophet Isaiah, puts these questions to his people, it's not that they don't know or haven't heard or haven't been told or haven't understood. They most definitely have. The problem is they are living as though they haven't. What they know is making no difference to their lives. And so the answers to these questions do not reveal something new, but remind them that they are not living by by the things they already know. These things are not making a difference. It's a little bit like when I forget to put the bins out on a Thursday morning and the family say to me, don't you know that it's bin day? Well, of course I know. It's not that I don't know this. It's been told to me from the beginning, since the day that we moved in. But I've just in that instant forgotten, or more accurately, I'm not acting as though I know this to be true. Well, they have been told from the beginning. They have understood since the earth was founded. This is standard stuff. You know this about God, you always have. So why are you not living like you do? And I think we do the same, don't we? Isn't it true that we would handle so many things in our lives so much better if we didn't do this? It's called functional atheism. Atheism is not believing in God, but functional atheism is believing in him, but just living as though you don't and facing all things in life without God in your own strength, without the hope and the reassurance of his promises. Well, in answer to these questions, Isaiah now reminds us of some of the things that he has already said in this chapter. But I wonder if this time, with the way the questions are posed beforehand, the point is that this is not just a call to know and to hear and to understand, but to live like we do. So let's take it one phrase at a time. Here's the first one. He sits enthroned above the circle of the earth. God rules. It's not the nations around them that rules. No, they're like grasshoppers in comparison. God is sovereign. So stay faithful to him. Don't put your trust in others. Other nations even that seem more powerful. They are not. But God most definitely is. So the second phrase, he stretches out the heavens like a canopy and spreads them out like a tent to live in. Just look back at the description of God in verse 12 that we saw a few weeks back. Poetic language, of course, but language that's supposed to blow our minds as it uses everyday analogies to show the greatness of God. And here is another. Maybe you've done a spot of camping this year and you unroll your tent from the bag on your chosen patch of grass, ready to peg it down and put it up. Well, God does the same with the heavens. God does this with the whole of the cosmos rolls it out like a tent. Well, we read on, he brings princes to naught and rulers of this world to nothing. Takes us back to the ideas of verses 15 to 17, where we read that the nations are a drop in a bucket. They are as nothing. And here we read that the Lord brings the princes of those nations to naught, the rulers of these nations to nothing. And in verse 24, 
where we're just given an important bit of perspective on events in whatever times we're living. See, from God's perspective, from the perspective of the great sweep of history, of him working out his plans for our world, well, as soon as they're planted, sown, take root, he blows on them and they wither and then are swept away like chaff. Again, similar to verses 6 and 7 of the chapter, all people are like grass, the grass withers and the flowers fall because the breath of the Lord blows on them. In the grand scheme of things, in the sweep of history that God holds in his hands, for the nations that seem all powerful, they're here today and gone tomorrow. So who will you trust? See, if this is what God is like, the vision we get in chapter 40, well, do we live like we know this to be true? Just highlight three of the key phrases from these verses. Will you trust the one true God who sits enthroned above the earth, who rolls out the universe like a tent to dwell in? And in what area of your life do you need to believe that God reigns and to live like you believe it? You see, if theology does not lead, to, lead us to wholehearted commitment to God in every way, then we have not known nor heard nor understood just how great God is. Isaiah gives us a vision of God and he calls us to live like we believe it.